Now that I have my first insulation layer done, the walls and the roof, I thought I'll do my second stage of um, room acoustic analysis to see what difference uh, is actually going to make the insulation, the first layer of it. Now it will have a lot of effect because I can al already can tell um, from my voice what I can hear inside with the insulation with no jeep rock or drywall on. So all of the sound in this room is pretty much being um, absorbed by the insulation. Now, that's not soundproof because the sound still goes out because there's nothing sealing the room yet. I still don't even have a door. But the sound in here, there's pretty much no more echo. It's practically dead. Now, with the testing that I'm going to do now with Room EQ Wizard, I'm going to run analysis and to see how different it'll be, especially the waterfall effect. Now the waterfall graph tells us how quickly a sound is actually dying. So I'm just looking at the graph, which I will show you on the screen, uh, of the waterfall before any insulation was in here. And as you can see, especially in the lower frequencies, about the 120, 130 hertz, we have quite a bit of um, you know fall there so you know over 300 milliseconds it can't go even, even any further than that so there's a lot lot of sound still uh, taking its time to decay to um, to the lowest level which is uh, you know down to uh, minus 45 db and so on or 45 db um, and if you look at the graph, you see what I mean. So I'm, I have my microphone uh, set up, same as before, same location, in the middle of the room, no particular uh, soft spot yet. Uh, so, and then I've got the speaker, the same place as the first initial one is, and I've already done my um, room level for 75 dB of, uh, of white noise, and I'm just going to run and see what uh, waterfall we're going to get. Well, let, let's look at the compare and the graph as well and see what we're going to get. So, a new measurement. Okay, so we now have a new graph. Let's have a look at the graph I'm, I don't expect it to be much different from the first one only because the room size hasn't changed very tiny bit because of the insulation so let's just compare let's just compare that one with the uh, overlay it with the first one Okay, what we're looking at is the graph difference between the blue one being uh, without insulation and the purple one is a new one that I just did. So as you can see, the peak which was about, which is about 130 hertz, that's actually uh, got a little bit lower and moved up to 182 hertz which is actually a, a better response and then all of these uh, dips around 3.3k um, or 3.5k it actually has come up and now we have a dip around 5.8k and then goes back up again so the insulation definitely did have some effect on the um, the graph you know I wasn't expecting that but there you go uh, I could be wrong you know um, until we measure it it's a bit hard to know so that's what the new graph looks like so it definitely has changed since now the, uh, the other interesting one would be is the waterfall that's just gonna generate that wow 
Now that waterfall looks so much better. We have a peak of about 60-65 Hertz where it's taken uh, over 300 milliseconds but majority of them is actually less than less than uh, uh, about 100 milliseconds so that's that's quite good so that's quite um, quite low so the decay is much faster than what we were looking at on the last one we did back in December as you can see you know the, the, there's definitely longer decay time without the insulation and as soon as we put the insulation in um, they pretty much die up at the same time you know and past past about 140 Hertz or so that's when you get a little bit more about 100 uh, probably 120 milliseconds and then we've got a little bit of peak way below that um, so this is a good result this is a very good result that means the sound it just dies straight away so no echo which is true unfortunately as I mentioned this will change as soon as the jeep rock goes on now what this proves is that having the two layers of the insulation that means sound going in from the first installation it will get dampened down when it hits the the outside wall insulation it will practically die and whatever reflects back from the outside wall to the inside wall is pretty much dead and gone so that's how um, effective it's gonna be with two walls and double insulation and that air gap in between that will allow sound to most likely no more than once ref back and forward reflection and the sound is dead so you'll have less chance of going out of this room I hope that makes sense you know um, that's the whole idea of it and you gotta make sure that these two walls are not touching each other so that the sound is not passing on uh, from one structure to the next but it going through the jeep rocks the dual layer of jeep rocks through the first insulation to the air gap and hitting this, uh, the outer insulation and pretty much as you can see with the graph pretty much dying very very quickly before it even gets a chance to go outside the room and whatever is reflected back then that's get absorbed and dies again so you know uh, we're looking about 75 down to uh, 40 with one installation so you know about 30 30 to 30 dB or so uh, of uh, sound transmission loss so not bad and that's what only one so you double that that should give you pretty much 60 dB of um, you know technically 60 dB of sound transmission loss pretty good well I'm quite happy with the result and uh, hopefully very soon We'll finish off and we'll do a few more tests as it progresses uh, once I finish the second layer of the insulation of the in, inner uh, structure in a wall we do another test and see how much difference that will make till next time